analysts think when it comes to four things, devolution, education, healthcare, and the economy. How has the Jubilee government performed? We'd like to hear from you as well at Trevor Media to Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. We're scaling it on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the least, 10 being the highest. All right? So let's give us your scorecard. Let's hear what your thoughts are. Dr. Kimani Omatangi is here. Kiambu Senator, thank you so much for making time. We have Dan Stanomari, advocate of the High Court, is also here with us. Asante for making time. Honorable Wilson Socion is here. Nominated member of parliament is also here with us. Asante for making time. And Honorable Gladys Boss. Wasingishu, woman representative, is here with us as well as Santi Sana for making time. So let's start off with the dailies. There's a lot going on here. Let's get a quick feel of what you're thinking. Is so soon I'll start with you. Front page of the standard, CSS order to chiefs on Uhuru choice. Matiangi says when the president takes a position on any matter, all provincial administration officers must take cue without fail, warns against contradicting the directives. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, of course, if it is in line with the job descriptions, because all officers have <coughs> job descriptions, that would be okay. But if it is trying to infringe on the constitutional rights of chiefs, because they're also citizens, and uh, Matiang should be cognizant of Article 38 of our constitution, yeah. that grants every citizen the right to choose uh, political decisions of their own and to exercise them. So I would want to believe uh, uh, that uh, it, the directive is with the, to do with the job description but not to do with the basic fundamental human rights like that of exercising their political decision. Okay. So it should not be a precursor that uh, the executive and uh, the so-called deep state yeah. would like to orchestrate and muscle the chiefs to begin running uh, political errands for the state. Okay. Uh, that they should refrain and uh, should know that there is a constitution that grants <coughs> citizens that right. Okay. Yeah. Omar, is there a thin line here or is it just a no-brainer that you should follow what the president says, regardless of what, how far it goes? Because if you're under his government and he says this is the direction we're taking, why would you go a different direction? Well. Uh, the structure of government is that uh, chiefs and provincial administration, though illegal within the constitutional framework that we have today, are, are duty bound to obey the directives issued by their bosses. Failure to that amounts to an offense called uh, insubordination. Failure to comply with lawful orders. As Mushua puts it, anything lawful and anything within the mandate of the chiefs if it does not constitute a criminal act whose liability of or culpability of, a, of having committed a crime or having uh, done an offense is based on the law. So what the CS is saying, follow directives. Remember the Chiefs Act exists and they operate within that Chiefs Act, which is a very, very powerful tool yeah. in terms of administration of uh, the citizens of this country. I have no problem with the government functioning because once government does not function, then the governance of a country becomes a big problem. Me, I have no problem with those directives because uh, if a chief has been told that Chang'a should be eliminated from a certain area, really that is for the pu public good, but the chiefs are not going to be told yeah. to go to the villages and shave every woman woman's hair because that is illegal and unconstitutional. Yeah. Yeah. Umatangi, is there a potential of this being abused or misunderstood to mean that even rights that you are fundamentally yours can then be infringed upon? Well, I, I, would, I would hardly think so, uh, Trevor, but let, why don't I st start by saying good morning to you and to our viewers. Morning. Uh, well, it's been uh, a while. You were missing in action <laughs> the last few weeks. <laughs> I am back now. <laughs> Karibu, man. That's and good. I hope you are, you're keeping well. I am good, brother. Good. All right. I, I don't think so. And in, uh, in the first place, um, uh, Trevor, I think if you look at the way the headline is worded and the real story on page seven, you know, on the headline, now, uh, they, they say that the CSS order to chiefs on Uhuru's, on Uhuru choice. And the word choice is in, uh, singular, there's no S. And then, but if you look at the real story, uh, page seven, they add the S, choices. <laughs> you know, meaning that uh, the headline is just intended to be catchy yeah. and, and, and kind of directional. 
to, to insinuate that uh, it is a certain choice or one choice that uh, the administration is, is, is being asked to, to tow. But I've, I've gone through the story itself. Uh, I don't think there is anywhere within what they've reported here and that suggests that uh, Matiangi was, was either directly or indirectly proposing that there is a certain choice that the provincial administration should follow, uh, that being or, or one of them being uh, the president's choice. But as my AG has said, and it's good to see him, he's been away for a while. Uh, as, as, as he said, you know, in, in the structure of governance, yeah. uh, Trevor, the bureaucracy is, 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 uh, is uh, rightly under and in control uh, of the executive. Mm -hmm. and, and that is why, indeed, you find in democracies that the, the president is, is presumed to be more powerful than the other heads of the other arms of government because he has legal uh, control and power over the bureaucracy. Now, the provincial administration being one such, then uh, they are definitely duty bound uh, to follow and fall in line with what the proposals of the executive are. And of course, the president is the head of the executive as well as the head of state. So I, I don't think that there is any ill intended. I would probably look at uh, the, f the, the last few uh, elections, if you, if you don't mind us going that way, because that, that would be probably uh, the insinuation that would have been intended by that headline. And, and looking at the elections that we had in uh, 2007 uh, onwards, 2013, uh, 2017, you find that uh, with the introduction of our multi-party and then the formation of the coalitions that have been in competition, uh, it, was, it, it was a very minimal role yeah. uh, that, that, that was uh, played. And, and if you look at where the provincial administration mostly falls during elections for that matter, and the police uh, by extension, is largely within a role within the IBC to support the IBC. So, so I do not think that in modern day Kenya, with the kind of exposure that our people have had politically, to, to, so to say, that it is possible uh, that you could have the provincial ad administration so bent or, or, or instructed uh, to carry out an instruction that would uh, result in an advantage to any candidate or any person mm. uh, who, is, who is running. So, so I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's a report that's intended to serve indeed what uh, it was, it's meant to do. Okay. Boss, yeah. could morning, this be Trevor. misconstrued? Good morning. Yeah, I do not know exactly what the exact words Matiangi did say. Yeah. But overall, we know what the rules are in relation to this. All chiefs have a job description yeah. of exactly what they're supposed to do. Uh, and so do police officers and so do any other person working in the in government including members of cabinet okay. so and the rule is always that uh, they should follow orders but only lawful orders okay. in fact they are exempt from disciplinary action where in, in a case where you have failed to follow uh, unlawful orders okay they are exempt from it, and you can even go and get reprieve from court as a result of it. But in the going by what has happened in the past and things that uh, that I can, I have, I, I mean that are facts known to me. For example, uh, the use of police during the Kiamba by uh, the chief, sorry, during the Kiamba by elections, that was an illegality. Yeah. Chiefs have nothing to do with elections. Election management is run by the IEBC. That was an illegality. So you can't say that that is uh, a, a, an order that they should follow, for example. We saw um, heavy police presence during by-elections. Yeah. Again, that is an illegality. And those police actually had not, should not have followed those orders to go and be present at the polling stations. Okay. Because the police officers who are supposed to be at the polling stations are those appointed as polling officials by IEBC. They get a separate appointment letter from IEBC for the period that they are supervising elections. So it's a select number, and they even sign a code of conduct. Yeah. And if they behave in a manner that is contrary to the Elections Act, they are actually liable in person for an election offense. Mm. So there are rules and regulations around this. And on top of it all, any person in Kenya, 
under Article 3, is obligated to follow the Constitution. So even an order from the President that is contrary to the Constitution, you can defy. Okay. And, and this was pronounced under the BBI judgment that the President had contravened the Constitution. You're not obligated to follow orders that are unconstitutional. Similarly, with the Cabinet. The Cabinet members have their own job description, and, but on top of it all, they took an oath of office to, uh, to defend, protect, and follow the constitution of Kenya. Okay. So did members of parliament, and so did every other officer who yeah, enters government will take the oath of office. Okay. Now that you're still on the floor, start us off on this one. Ruto's plan to upstage Raila in Western. Deputy President piles pressure on former NASA chiefs Musale Mudavadi and Moses Wetangula to join forces with the UDA to face ODM leader Raila Odinga next year. Are those two the missing part of the jigsaw puzzle mm -hmm. for an absolute hustler nation in the Western region? If those two don't support the DP, would they still stand a chance in the West? Um, I think the position of the of UDA and the Hasla movement has been to bring itself and sell itself as a party that welcomes people from all regions, all parts of Kenya, the, without regard to your religion, your ethnic uh, 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 community, and so on. So that is part of what we do, is try and get as many people on board. And, I, and any good politician who's worth their salt will try and do that. So, but we, uh, we, we have been clear that it is not uh, the acquiring kingpins that will give us votes. It's basically ensuring that we get the people at the grassroots level, because those are the real people, not a few tribal kingpins. That has been uh, the mantra of UDA. Yeah. But of course, we, you will find that most of the people who have moved to UDA at the moment will tell you that the people on the ground told them that this is the direction we want you to go. And remember, they are the ones who vote you in. So you cannot say that you have a position of your own individually, because ultimately you don't vote for yourself. Even if you do, it will be one vote uh, only. Yeah. So that is part of what we do, is persuade more people to get on board and uh, persuade uh, people on the ground to also you know, let their leaders know where, which position they want. Yeah, but is it about, supposed to be about ideology? Because these leaders have some already stated what they stand for. Mm -hmm. If you call them into your fold and you know what they're standing for, is it just about the numbers then and not the ideology? Because once I state what my position no, is... No, no, no. Just imagine, uh, I mean, uh, UDA has been in existence maybe 16 months, people say, or, you know, actively maybe 10 months. Yeah. And it's the most popular party now in Kenya. But why is it the most popular party? It's because its agenda is clear. That is going to change the economy. It's going to ensure that everybody is in a position that they benefit from the economic activities of this country. That everyone has an opportunity to make something out of themselves. Okay. To ensure that every household is able to have sufficient resources to care, take care of their daily needs. Okay. And that resonated with the grassroots. And, and the, that's why we call it the bottom-up economic model. Okay. We, we are going to have an economic model that ensures the forgotten people at the bottom will now have a chance okay. in the new Kenya. Right. And that is what resonated with the people, hence the reason why they are putting pressure on their leaders. And anybody who's joining actually subscribes to that economic model, yes. subscribes to our agenda, and subscribes to the things that we want to do to change the lives of Kenyans. Okay. Well, Matangi, what do you make of these coalitions that are being formed left, right, and center? And it's not just UDA only trying to woo the Orca principles. It's been done by ODM as well. Now there's a splinter group, DAP Kenya. Now, what is this? Are these coalitions about ideologies, or is it just about winning and getting the massive numbers going through? Then you figure yourself out as you go around. And that's the reason why promises are never really kept. Mm, yeah, and, uh, Trevor, I think I, I, would, I would summarize it all as a cold political calculation. It's, it's not about it. It's just simply political strategy. There's nothing about ideology at this time. And because, see, if you look at um, ultimately what is the, what, what is the goal? Of, of that are those that are competing, and especially now that the race has almost been, been defined into a two-horse race. Uh, it, is, it is absolutely about winning. 
And, and so uh, what do you expect and indeed what is happening to the candidates is you sit on your table like this and you put all the cards face up and you add one plus one and you see how do you get to the tip. That's, that's, all it, that's what it's all about. If you look at uh, the timing, for example, of a deputy president's uh, visit to Western Kenya, uh, you know, the, the approach he took to go and, uh, uh, you know, embrace, invite, uh, you know, coax, if you like, uh, yeah. these two to join him, is, is uh, immediately, uh, immediately in the runner-up to the formation of DAPK, you know, by, by Eugene Wamano. And, and if you look at strategy, because also in terms of wooing the voters, uh, it is essential yeah. uh, that you have that symbolic representation within a community of those that are deemed to be the leaders. And so if you look at that, uh, you, you see that, that um, Wamalwa defined himself as leaning towards uh, uh, Raila Odinga and, and uh, Azimiola Umoja. Yeah. And uh, then these two, uh, that is Wetangula and uh, Mudavadi, have firmly remained in Oka, but the one thing that is for sure is that they don't necessarily have the same uh, aspiration or goal. I mean, they are in Oka, but if you ask them if they would maybe either vote for the same person or if they both want to be in the forefront, they will tell you, yes, they, they do each one of them separately. And so, uh, for the deputy president then to want to approach the <coughs> two to up his numbers, and yeah. that is simple, to up his numbers within that area because there are, those are many people, and yeah. it is about numbers. You know, uh, Trevor, when we go to the elections, what we count is the votes. It is not how many people who are the right thinking have got good policy that supported you, or people who won medals before supported yeah. you. It is about numbers, it's one plus one. And so, I think, at the end of it, uh, what, what uh, the deputy president has done is uh, he's sat on his table and he thinks that if he has either one or all the two yeah. on his side, then he's got a, a game, uh, you know, a, a stake up other than his uh, competitors. Okay. But I think, um, yeah. uh, just in a quick shot, on that question that you asked, are these coalitions necessarily uh, about ideologies? Uh, I, I would answer no, because if you look at, again, most of the leaders or heads of those uh, coalitions yeah. are people who have in the past had parties yeah. or, or, or led parties. Some of them have rebranded from new ones uh, and most of, most of the time it is uh, individual, it's personal. You find that that person is calculating to be not out of the game. Mm -hmm. Come 2022. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Omar, I'll come to you last because you're the only one who's neutral on this. Let's hear the partisan <laughs> teams first. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Zion, what do you think? Without these two, are you going to limp in the Western region? Yeah, I, I think the message uh, by the Deputy pre President <clears throat> is very clear to Musali and Wetangula that uh, join me to form the next government. It's, it's simple, it's clear. And uh, this comes from the background of uh, the nature of our politics in this country, particularly during transitions. Yeah, in 2002, uh, very many political parties were forced to come together to form a coalition, the National Rain Alliance Rainbow Coalition. Yeah. And with it, there was a message. There is always a message. There is always an agenda. There is always a manifesto. And at that one, there was free education and very many other issues. And you, we can count and count the very many achievements during Kibaki administration, including the new constitution. And uh, uh, in 2007 and 2008, of course, there were a set of coalitions and that contestation. In 2012, uh, the Jubilee was made out of a negotiated coalition between uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and, uh, and William Root. And 2017, you know, there was NASA and uh, consistently Jubilee pushing strong. And therefore, moving to 2022 and uh, looking at the very strong agenda of UDA, of uh, social economic revolution, actually. It's a very strong model. And uh, uh, the position taken by Musalia and, uh, and, and uh, Wetangula, they, they seem to have very, very, very strong beliefs. Yeah. And uh, what, what the deputy president is doing is to extend uh, a political <coughs> persuasion also from his end okay. that uh, it would be far much better and easier for 
Mudavadian Wetangula to team up with, the, with him and yeah. form the next government. So really, uh, and that is the trend of politics all over the world, even in government formation, uh, is mostly through coalitions and negotiations. And probably this, this was the strongest message from <coughs> the side of the deputy president to okay. the two leaders who, of course, if you look at the Serena team that negotiated yeah. uh, the, the coalition government, Mudavadi and Wetangula, of course, are right there. And yeah. they have a history, a strong political history in this country. So really, and this was a strong visit by the deputy president to Western, look at the way he was received and uh, the message that is coming from the ordinary folks. Yeah. And what people are not seeing yeah. is that the ordinary Kenyans are moving ahead of everyone. And uh, you look at the poverty levels that is hurting citizens so badly, never seen before since independence because of uh, a, a, a bad structure of governance stemming from the presidency, Kenyans would desire a strong leadership. Okay. And uh, when you look at those calls, those calls were made through the people of Western. Okay. And it's a strong uh, political move. And uh, I, I, nobody should ignore such such activities and such persuasions as we move forward. Okay. And uh, this is going to be another epic transition, and I am sure we will be headed to another Kibaki economic era through this type of arrangement. Okay. And a very serious leader yeah. must communicate a clear message. Okay. And you look at it, it's very clear. Yeah. Musalia, Mudavadi, and Wetangula join us, we form the next government. And okay. I think that's the clearest message all from right. the side of Omar, is, is that what it's all about? Just forming the next government? No ideologies, no nothing, nobody cares what happens. Just come and we form the next government. Do these two even stand <coughs> a chance on their own? Because there's also this narrative that it's a two-horse race. Uh, Trevor, thank you, and uh, viewers of Citizen, thank you very much. I'm only sandwiched by three politicians. <laughs> I, as I've said, you asked me, I have no interest in politics to contest. Yeah. That one is very clear, I have no interest to contest. The question that uh, I look at is that uh, the constitutional dispensation demands that whoever wins the presidency has some constitutional things to do. One, 50 plus one, vote. Two, at least 25% within 24 counties in this country. This is a, a serious question that now shapes how these politicians <laughs> are moving all over the country. Yeah. So that we have seen the alleged two horses, Raila Odinga and William Ruto, going to every part of this country. Unlike the other time, when there was balkanization of the country, you look votes from certain quarters and ignore certain ethnic communities away from your, your interest group. That being the issue, then we look at the vehicles they are using to contest. Are these political parties, as per the definition, in the Oxford Dictionary or the Black's Law Dictionary because political parties are ideological based. There is a clear roadmap that can be verified and can be tested. In this country, what we have are commercial entities baptized as political parties for the sole purpose, one, to galvanize the resources, and two, pretend that they are representing the interests of Kenyans. None of the political parties, I think the registrar is talking of around 97, they are heading to 100 uh, political parties, are briefcase things, purely deceptive to Kenyans to vote for them. The model, my good, Mwishimi was uh, talking about the bottoms up model, the Azimio model, whatever model. <laughs> really, those are coined slogans that have no basis and are not going to be followed on the 9th of September 2022. My Kenyan fellow Kenyans get it very clear that none of you is part of that sloganeering as we are alone. This is purely a dance for gaining power.
power. We have seen all over from 1963 the same slogans, the same rebranding, the same messaging, but after the elections, what happens? Two Jubilee members are here. Three Jubilee members are here. Now they see, the see the dance they, they danced from 2013 to 2017. See the dance they are dancing today is completely opposite. And that's what I'm saying. For, for politicians who are political chameleons, we need to see inside them that what is at stake for Kenyans. Are we just following blindly? The deputy president has done tremendously well. Very tremendously well. The retired, the right prime minister has done tremendously well. But the question is, is Musalia, is Wetangula, is Gideon Moy, is Kalonzo, are they keeping pace? I think they have, they have run out of steam. The speed that the two horses are running, that is what William Ruta has done. He has gone to Western to completely destroy the base of Musali Davadi, so that he tells him that, boss, you know I'm in your bedroom. And in this bedroom, I am the person controlling the masses. My teacher and my good friend of mine, Mashimiwa Shule, has told you uh, very clearly that uh, she taught me at the University of uh, Nairobi, she will always remain my teacher, that UDA has done tremendously well. I agree with her. Omatangi, affiliated to the other side of Baba, has told you they are doing tremendously well. The Azimio was fantastic. That was a great uh, workmanship and uh, a, a big optical show. And my good friend, we, uh, former Nat, now you, have, you, have, you want to be a senator? Of Bomet. The question is, are the crowds that we are seeing crowds per se representing the wishes of the republic or the hired people paid for a specific purpose. Look at everybody who is going everywhere. Yeah. The citizens are no longer showing their preference out, outrightly to any politician. They are there for hire. If today people go to Nyamira, where I come from in a, a village there, there will be crowds. Those crowds are hired and they are paid. When citizen captures, the same faces you see in Baba's troop are the same faces you see in William Ruto's troop. They're the same faces you see in Oka troop. The only difference is that the Oka guys cannot be able to fund adequately. And therefore, they, that is why you have not seen the moral. My position is a bit contradictory that uh, I don't see Kenyans being in the deciding table of what we are going to do in 2022. It is purely a business for politicians and Trevor, me and you, we will only be watching what they do. <laughs> That's a good point to take a break. When we come back, we talk about the Jubilee scorecard. And I'll give you a chance to respond because only two of them have actually declared they're in UDA. You haven't. And there was a direct accusation that you're on the Azimio side. So I'll give you a chance. He has not said that. I'll give you a chance. I wanted to, to warn my AG that at that, at that rate he might lose his job. <laughs> But you don't surprise. I thought you were the deputy, you're the running mate for Alfred Mutua. Is he? You know, he's been saying so that. Why you, and he's the one who's saying two was race. And yet you're in the race. No. That means you've given up. No, uh, no you, 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 you've, you've missed the big point. The big point, and that is what we said. Uh, should Trevor see here, you roaming the camp, is, serious. Is, 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 is that, you know, you strategically uh, position yourselves. And as my running mate said, uh, you can decide that if you find that this is the team that you join, or these are the team you join, that is the team you join to win, for that matter. You know, and uh, that is why uh, Wetangula, Mudavadi, Gideon Moy, and all those others are in the, are in the race. So, uh, but I which team are you joining? 
Uh, we, are, we, are, we are strategizing. So actually he was pretending he was running for president. <laughs> he was just uh, angling himself so that he can join somebody. No, That's no, bad. You know, you know, you know, so I'm disappointed. I, I said here on you were the deputy show. president. I was calling you deputy you know, president. You know, you know uh, Trevor, I said here in the last show that we are launching on the 2nd of January. Wait for my launch. Why are you going to point Okay, let's say we are going to announce. Okay, right. Let's take a quick break and I will come back to the jubilee. I mean, I'm I mean, that's uh, so, such high-value material. <laughs>